What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beard's Garage and today we have a viewer's engine. So we got an email about a week ago from a viewer and it said this. This is from Jose. I finished the build and it doesn't run right. I checked clearances a couple times and I googled some things, watched some videos and can't find help. I'm giving up and I've came a long way so I didn't want to give up. This is my first Predator project build ever and I spent a little over $900 with all the parts. If I ship it to you, could you adjust my Predator and see what I missed or did wrong or maybe shoot a video of fixing my mistakes or what you shouldn't do? I would really appreciate it. So normally we don't mess with people's projects or work on their engines, but I felt really bad that I probably influenced this kid or guy, I don't know how old he is, to get into this hobby and he's having these issues. And I know a lot of you probably run into issues like this. So I told him if he would pay to ship it to me and ship it back that I would fix it for free because I think it would make a good video of what did this guy do wrong with his build. Because I feel like a project like this with someone, whether you're young or older, this could be the deciding factor if you're gonna continue on with this hobby. So if he was to fail at this and not get this right, he's got $900 sitting here and money's tight these days. Everything is more expensive. Uh, so this is a big deal to spend this kind of money on a, on a toy. This could be the deciding factor whether he continues on. So we want him to continue on, of course, or our videos are worthless. We're gonna check it out today. He said it's running, but not running right. We're gonna go through the normal stuff that I would check if we're trying to see if an engine's got a problem. So there's five things an engine needs to, to run and run correctly. And I'm gonna go through these from most important to least important. The most important is compression. If you don't have compression, it doesn't matter if you have fuel and everything else, it's not gonna run right because the compression isn't there to cause the combustion of the combustion engine. So we're gonna test compression by just pulling the engine over. You can't use a compression tester on these. I've heard if you run the engine backwards, you can, because these have a compression release on the cam. Shown on screen is a compression release. As it comes around, it hits the cam lobe and it opens up the compression release and that allows you to start these engines easier. If you didn't have that, they're extremely hard to start. Check compression by pulling it over. Then we're gonna check spark next because of course if we had gas, had no spark, that gas is useless. Then we're gonna see how his carb looks. We're gonna look at the bowl, look at his jet and stuff and make sure everything's good there. He is running a stock style carb, so I hope he jetted it up. He is running an air filter adapter. So we'll check that and see what size jet he has in there and stuff. Uh, the next thing is timing. Timing is very important because it times when everything needs to happen, like when your spark plug fires and where the piston's at when the spark plug does fire. So that is important. And the last thing is air. You gotta have good air. Of course, he has no air filter on this, so of course we have air, but that could be a big reason your go-kart isn't starting or running right. If you jetted it up and then put the stock air box on it, it's not gonna run right. Carburetors are really finicky and they cannot self-adjust like fuel injection can, so it's really important to make sure you have the right air. We're also gonna be checking things like valve lash. Uh, timing is gonna be the last thing I wanna check because I don't wanna get inside the block. So let's start off with uh, compression, spark, fuel, and then we'll go ahead and check the valve lash. Guys, we're gonna take a real quick break to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Blaster. Today, we're gonna be looking at their original formula, the PB Blaster. This stuff's been out since 1957. It's one of the best chemicals you can have on your shelf in a shop. It actually will work its way up the threads of a bolt in between the nut and eat through rust, grime, and dirt and free up the part. This stuff, we use it all the time on go-karts. We even use it on chains when we don't have chain lube. This stuff works amazing. If you've used it, you know the power of PB Blaster. Their newer cans have the Pro Straw, which you can flip out if you need pinpoint, or you can shut it if you need to just miss the area. You also can adjust how much spray you want from the can all right on top of the can. This stuff also doesn't evaporate. And the best thing about that, it leaves a light film to further protect against corrosion and rust in the future. We put it on some parts that we know is gonna be out in the weather and we don't have time to paint them right now. We spray on some blaster. It's gonna help the rust that's on there to free it up and also protect it for longer, uh, longer setting in the weather. So make sure to check out the links in the video description to Blaster's full lineup of products. They're coming out with a ton of stuff. They're not only PB Blaster anymore, they got a ton of stuff to help you fight corrosion, rust, and stubborn parts in your shop. And also check them out at a local dealer near you. Thank you, Blaster, and let's get back to the video. So like I said, the first thing we're gonna check is compression. We're just gonna pull the engine over, and if we feel those hits of compression, then we know we have compression. So you can tell it has really good compression because it's giving me a good resistance on that compression stroke right there. So the engine has compression. The next thing we're gonna do is check for spark. We're gonna just pull the spark plug wire 
He's running one of our MSD spark plug wire and coil packs. So we're just gonna lay this on something metal and we're gonna turn it over. It's easier if you pull the spark plug because then you have no compression. You can pull it over a lot easier. So I'm gonna try to set this where you can see it and then pull it over. So you can see it did have a spark. So that means our coil is good and that doesn't mean his spark plug is firing. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that spark plug. That tested the coil. So we know the coil is good because we know this is a brand new uh, NGK spark plug. So now we need to check the spark plug because you could have a bad coil, but have a good spark plug or vice versa. So you need to check both. You need to put a brand new plug, check spark. That's gonna tell you if your coil is good and then check your spark plug. And Jose did say he is running some, I think 1.2 uh, ratio rockers, chrome molly push rods. That could be another factor if he's not using the right length push rods, then his angle of his valves could be very poor. And there's a bunch of different factors. And another thing, if you ever ship someone an engine, make sure to drain the oil out of it. This mm -hmm. thing had oil everywhere. And there's oil on this. I think this is from shipping. Like it's just coated in oil. Looks like he's been running pretty rich on this spray some brake clean borrow my son's toothbrush <laughs> it's better if you use a wire brush on this if you have one if you don't you know, just grab your little brother's toothbrush it's fine don't do that you gotta tell people i'm kidding or they'll do it <laughs> So you want to make sure to blow out everything out of the spark plug because any kind of moisture from too much fuel or oil or anything can make this spark plug not fire. There's oil probably going to blow out this spark plug hole, so we're going to lay that there. We got a real strong spark on it, so we know his spark plug is good. We was getting a little bit of stuff blowing out. I'm going to go ahead. You won't be able to see. I'm going to look down, look at the piston, just see what it looks like. And it looks like it's pretty dang clean-ish. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and check the valve lash because that could be a big thing if his valve lash is too tight. And so I don't think that's a problem, but also if his if you set the valve lash on the compressor release, then you can have issues. So that's the next thing we're going to do. Since he's using ratio rockers, he went ahead and got this spacer. You normally have to run this spacer to clear the ratio rockers. There's our exhaust, there's our intake, and then that little bump after the intake was our compression release. So I'll show you again, there's exhaust, and then there's intake, and then there is our compression. You notice after the intake pushes down and lets off, this will crack just a little bit, and that's always our compression release. So exhaust, intake, compression release. So we're gonna stop it right after the compression release right there. And it seems like he has that set pretty darn good. So I'm using three thousandths. That's a really good feel, three thousandths. So he did a good job at setting that. Then on the exhaust, same thing again. It could be a hair bit tighter, but at the point that he's at right now, that's not gonna cause an issue. Also, your geometry of your valves are important. He did put chrome alley push rods. Let's say he would have did too long, then that rocker would have been hiked up on the push rod side. And then you're gonna get less articulation if you're not at the right geometry. So when you do chrome alley push rods, if you don't know what size, you're gonna to have to test it and that's a video in itself. But you want your rocker to almost be flat with the side of the, the valve cover uh, it, when it, there's no pressure on it. You, if anything, you want to be a little bit cocked back. Um, I don't know if this is making sense, but I, again, we'll do a separate video on this. So I think everything in here looks pretty good. So he followed my instructions very well. Good job, Jose, so far. There's quite a bit of metal flakes in here, if you notice that. So I don't know what that is from, but there's a lot of them. Jose, what'd you do? <laughs> I don't know, that makes me want to pull the side cover more now to check that out so we're gonna go ahead and drain the oil it did look like the oil was kind of old in this thing so let's check this out 
so you can see it doesn't look horrible but I'm trying to just watch any flakes in it I see a little bit of metal not the worst thing in the world but you see that yeah there's quite a bit of metal in there there's a lot of metal see it's got all kinds of glitter look to it hmm I don't like that I do not like that <laughs> that's more than I normally see honestly so it's a little concerning so I don't think Jose I think he did a good job on this whole build so far everything looks really good and like you're never going to learn how to do this stuff unless you do it you're going to make mistakes because we made mistakes that's how we got here was making mistakes and I just wasn't too ashamed to show you guys my mistakes as we went I mean I had old videos that I've taken down where I was wrong because I didn't know and I was telling you guys how to do something now that I'm a more professional at this uh, quote unquote that I know better I'm like oh, I should make that video private because it's not the correct way to tell these people to do this so there's nothing even if he did something wrong it doesn't matter that's the only way anybody got to where they're at Look at um, Elon Musk. He's blew up so many millions of dollars of rockets <laughs> trying to get it right. But he's he's going to get it exactly the way he needs it eventually by failing and learning his mistakes. So don't be discouraged. Don't let your friends discourage you. Uh, just keep pushing on and keep building. And one thing with clutches is you need room for them to float. So if you have this thing, he put a bearing on there just to space it probably for his particular build. And it just worked out that a bearing was a good spacer for it. But I can tell you one thing, look at his seal. That is completely not in there. They just popped that off. So that's no bueno. If we had this clutch on there and we tighten it up and you can't push the clutch side to side, that's incorrect. You need to leave enough so this clutch can you know I'm trying to slide it smoothly can move just a little bit side to side and it keeps stress out of this whole bell and how this all works and it's going to help extend the life of your clutch his seal is in good good shape there's also a spring in there you can see that silver spring mm -hmm. that is what holds pressure on the bore so that everything's in good shape we do have a lot of nastiness in there so we'll make sure to clean that up make sure his crank is nice and shiny right there and put this back on once we pull the side cover off so that is really clean the jet looks pretty small for for a 212 but i'm not positive because i never can remember factory jet sizes uh, i have a set of metric drill bits that we can test um, and we'll test that here in just a little bit but i'm really curious to open up the side cover but fuel bowl was really clean though so we got our engine on our little stand i found this on nr racing this is a sweet little the best engine stand ever whoever made this atac industries you crazy mm -hmm. dog you make good product all right we're going to take these six meals out we have six of them all right sometimes you can pop this off but most time you got to use these that push against the dowels and push your billet flywheel will come with little islands. So we use these. We thread it in there until we bump against that dowel. Go ahead and put our other one in as well because you want to bounce back and forth, tightening one to the other. So we're just going to get it snugged up and do a couple turns. There you go. You can see it pushing it open. Do a couple turns on that side. I want to evenly press it off. All right, so when we're taking these off, we want to shake it a little bit because sometimes the cam gets caught up in the side cover. This one did not. So we're good. It's a little. Is that your hose? Yeah, it's okay. The bearings most of the time pop out of this, but there's a hard spot on his crank. One thing he should have done, he didn't eat off any of this. Um, look how much metal there is in there. That's just that's not good so have a lot of a lot of metal it's looking good so far there is a 
a worn spot of his o-ring so ring in here there's a ton of metal shards and stuff embedded in this so he's going to need a new o-ring for sure do not buy o-rings for billet side covers from arc they come with one that's fine they sell those things it costs you like 25 dollars to get one o-ring for a billet if you go on amazon i'll put the links in the video description you can get a 10 foot roll of this for like 10 bucks and it's the same o-ring material same diameter i'm looking out for you don't buy i bought one or two and i'm like what am i doing bearing feels good i was afraid there'd be a bunch of metal particles but this is the outer bearing yeah they both feel okay so we're all right right there so i'm looking if there's any it has to be rod bearing like i don't know unless okay it could be one thing he could have tapped the holes for the governor and not clean the block um, that could be a possibility too but this is never a good idea he didn't get rid of any of this gasket maker uh, that's a big no-no always get rid of the gasket maker because that o-ring is not going to seal correctly yeah so timing is good the dots line up on the two and so we have a dot there in the crank and we have this dot they just need to line up perfectly he did that right <clears throat> so so far he's good so i'm going to go ahead and pull this entire engine apart uh, for a couple reasons i don't feel safe sending this back like we can get this engine running properly but i found so much metal debris inside of it that it's how long is it going to run good for him i don't want him to get this thing back and in a month end up you know slinging a rod because his rod bearing gave out so i don't feel comfortable going any further i know one big mistake was this isn't going to hurt like how it's running but it's going to give you more inflay than you want from your crankshaft and we'll talk about that in a little bit because the billet side covers do come with shims he didn't run any of the shims so that means he didn't check his in play on his crank. You don't have to throw gauges and stuff up. People say you do, you don't have to. Just do it by eye and try to get it around 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, just have it pulling in and out a little bit. So you do that by adding thick and thin shims on and it is a process. You gotta put the billet side cover on, pull it back off. It's not that fun, but that's part of the engine building process. But always scrape all this off because that O-ring is not properly gonna seal. And uh, now we have to replace his O-ring because of that, because it like, in the thick spots it messed up the o-ring so we're going to pull the head pull the valve train then we'll undo the rod pull everything out and just inspect everything as we go uh, to see what went wrong with this build so we're going to pop off his carb he did a really good job on everything honestly and to take his carb off we got two 10 mils oh that wasn't on there all the way So let's start laying his parts out. His carb wouldn't tighten up all the way on one side. That can cause a major issue because if you don't tighten it up all the way, oh, you can see it was, you can see there's no gas right here, but there's gas residue all around that side there. <clears throat> so that could have been his problem altogether right there. So it looks like this side is wet and this side is dry. Um, that's probably where he didn't have it tightened up. <clears throat> I'm gonna say that that could have been a big issue with his build was that not being correct. And another thing, he didn't scrape the gasket material off of the head. Uh, that's another big no-no. So he was double gasket, had double gasket that can make a big vacuum leak that's gonna make your engine run really bad. I'm really curious if that's his problem so to get these rockers out we're going to leave them adjusted just like they are because he has them adjusted really good we're going to pop off the c-clip on the outside of each arm and that'll allow these pins to push out and we can pull those right up so we got our pick sitting in there we're gonna like pry up just push your finger over it because those son of a guns go flying you're done <laughs> you're done so slide that out sometimes it's a pain so there it is I'm gonna try to keep exhaust where it was. His push rods don't look bent so far. Do the same thing on the other side. Okay, we got all that. So he did get the proper lightweight lash caps. You have to have these on Hemi engines. So he had those, so we're just gonna put those aside. Then we can use a 12 and pull this head off. 
also didn't feel like those was torqued like amazing I, the, so the owner's manual will tell you to torque those at 17 foot pounds I always do like 20 you can go a little bit further than that uh, he did use a sheet metal the oil in there is from shipping where it was just everywhere but head gasket doesn't look like it was blown or anything he did use a Wiseco flat top piston and this hog and it seems like his rod I mean he's almost zero in the hole yeah so he must have got a little bit longer rod because I mean if he's anything he's like ten thousandths in the hole maybe less what's weird though is he's flatter here than he is up here why is that like he's really close to flat here not here hmm. pretty good there I don't see the cam making contact a lot of times you got to look on these and see if it's hitting the crank and it is not so his cam is wearing fine his lifters or followers whatever you want to call them they look perfectly fine look real nice I like to put the wrench on like that and then squeeze it like that to break it loose and I bounce back and forth okay his torque spec seemed about right this is 160 like 160 or 150 inch pounds you think I remember this from all the engines I built you would be incorrect if you're done an ARC rod these are torque to yield bolts that means you torque them once you throw them away because they stretch that's why you're supposed to torque the bolts and then break them loose and retorque them because the bolts stretch and you want to make sure they're like pre-stretched basically so I mean in all honesty we're supposed to be replacing these bolts but I've never had them fail I've ran them hard and put them up wet and sometimes you can't see it on this one but it'll be stretched in the threads if you over torque it but he looks fine on that one if it's not horrible but it's not great oh yeah that's not great at all so I can feel scratches if you can physically feel them that's no bueno the back side of his bearing was fine he didn't spin a bearing or nothing I wouldn't reuse that hmm I guess I haven't messed with the Wiseco piston but it only has one ring on it like you have normally you have your top compression your second compression then you have your oil ring and this is an oil scraper it's made to scrape the oil down the the bore as the piston's going down i never used the wiseco brand well look how it cuts in so to get this piston rod off you have to pull the rings very strange very strange it's got some good gouges you hear that the skirt's got some scrapes on it. Pretty good. I, mean, I don't know how much he ran this. Right there, it's got good wear. None on the side. I wonder if his bore is oval. Like oval Redenbacher. <laughs> uh, they're not like too poop to pop, but they're not amazing either. Jose, Jose. Oh, Jose. What did you do, son? Son, what'd you do? So I'm gonna get on the horn with Jose, call the kid or guy. I don't know how it is. I feel like it's a man. I feel like it's a teenager from his picture. Mm. You know, on the Google profile or whatever, it'll show you the picture. So I'm gonna get on the horn, find out some information about this engine, because the bore, look at the rust in the bore. Can you see that? Yeah, look at that scaling, that rust scaling on the bore. You see it, Lonnie? Demo. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's not good. Should have been honed. Do you want to see it? Oh yeah. That board it has cross hatching still. A lot of debris floating around in there. Aluminum debris. Debris. But debris. It did have water sitting in it at one time. I mean that's a good ledge. That's probably what wore on his piston was that ledge right there. Cause 
what had happened was I bet he left it out and it got water in it and it sat in there and then he tried to run it and it just was eating up that piston. I mean, would the piston work? Sure. I mean, if you're properly building the engine and you want it to last, yes, this engine's gonna run when we get done with it. But again, how long is it gonna last for him? He's gonna get this thing and it's gonna, you know, die. Did he drill out the hole? No, and you can also drill the hole out in between the uh, lifter. You see that down there, a little mm -hmm. tiny hole? You can drill it out to half inch, or half inch, don't go half inch. <laughs> Quarter inch or 5 sixteenths, and it'll let. So what that hole is there for is the oil dipper like aerates the oil, like makes a mist. Then that pressure comes up through this hole right here on the side of the block, and that transfers inside your head through this hole. So that is what is oil, oiling your valve setup. So then you need a way to relieve that oil, let it go somewhere. That little tiny hole is your only way to relieve it. So if you drill it out or take a drill one there and open it up, it'll keep less blow by from happening out of your valve cover because it's, it's keeping that oil circulating. I think, I really do think it's from where he drilled and tapped holes and forgot to clean out the block. Honestly, cleanliness, is a big deal on an engine. This is next to godliness. It is, and if you don't believe in God, cleanliness is just clean. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I believe in God, so it's next to godliness, but. It's just saying like it's important. These coils at rbgcarts.com. Yes, you can. Okay, now we need a 19 to pull the flywheel. That wouldn't torque that much. RC sells these flywheel pullers and they are just so handy. Get them in a quarter of an inch to five sixteenths, three eighths amount of threads. You want a decent amount. Uh, and then a 13 will pull that, pull it off. That's all it took. Flywheel is lapped, but it looked like he left a lot of grease on it. Look at that. It's all coming off there. So. I feel like this whole thing needs to be in the washer. Mm -hmm. His his crank journal looks good though. It looks real nice. Other than the amount of sheer volume of bald aluminum in there, you know. All right, so we got it all disassembled, and I went ahead and mocked out the head, and it doesn't seem to be all around. I was worried about that because when we look at this uh, billet or this flat top piston, you can see some wear marks on each side of the skirt on the ears of the piston uh it's nothing crazy but i don't like it i don't i mean i'm assuming it's done it because it does have rust in the cylinder it looks like this engine set outside it's a normal we've done this before where it'll set outside rain will go through the carb and set in the cylinder on the lower part of the bore and it'll leave a good rust mark i mean you can feel that quite a bit like it's a pretty noticeable that's just going to eat his rings up if it already hasn't done any damage. He said, so I did get on the phone with him. So the problem, the main problem with this engine while it wasn't running was for one, he didn't have his carb tightened up. So he had a vacuum leak. If you look on this carb, you can see it's wet with fuel on this side, but not this side here. And that's where this side was tight, this side wasn't. So the carb could have been getting a vacuum leak front and rear. The front wouldn't matter so much, but the back would. So that was number one issue. Uh, number two issue, was he bought this stock style carb off of Amazon and it was called a performance carburetor. Well, when we pulled the jet out of this carb and pulled a stock carb off of our shelf, because we don't use stock carbs much, so we just pull them off. We checked the jet sizes and you're not gonna be able to see this, but they're the same exact jet size. So the seller on Amazon is selling this as a performance carburetor and it is not, it's a stock carburetor. The only thing I could find that was different is the emulsion tube which sits behind your jet. This is the one from his carb. This is the one from ours. You can see the holes are in different places and it has more holes. That might help out a little bit, but the jet size is still a factory. So that's why he wasn't running right. He did all these performance parts and then tried to run it on a stock jet. Uh, carburetors are really finicky. When you give them more air, you have to give them more fuel because they can't self adjust. So that's his main issue. Carburetor was the main culprit. Uh, another thing is he would have wore this engine out in no time because there was so much metal. There's where Lonnie stuck his finger in the corner of the engine. This right here is where, when I first opened it up, I mean, look how much metal was sitting down in there. And he says that he cleaned it out really good with brake cleaner. 
um, before running it, he said that him and his friend went in there with paper towels. But even the piston has a ton of grit on the back of it. Just like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's aluminum flakes all through this engine. So I just wanna say, we don't want any hate going to the guy that built this engine. Jose is trying to learn, this is how you learn. You make mistakes and there's no problem with this. Um, and that's the reason I wanted to do this was to help him to continue on in his hobby and get past this hurdle that he had. Um, we're not here to make fun of him, judge him. Like I've done, you know, ignorant stuff in the past because I didn't know. And that's why we're making these videos is to teach you guys so you don't have to make the same mistakes. Um, and the biggest thing to take away from this is for one, clean your engine out as much as possible. Uh, make sure the cylinder looks good. If you can afford it, buy even the cheapest hone will do a decent job. We're gonna rehone the cylinder with a ball hone. We have a coarse one to knock down the bulk of the rust and then we're gonna go back with a fine one. You can get these on NR Racing. Um, EC carburetors may have them, but I got these off of NR and these are really nice high quality hones, but you can go with the cheap Amazon little three puck one. It doesn't matter, just get the surface of that cylinder as nice as you can with what you have. The ball hone will do a better job than the, the little three arm one, but uh, the three arm one works fine. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna hone his cylinder out, clean out the block completely. We're gonna drill that hole in between his lifters. That's not a have to, it's just like, it's gonna help it, you know, circulate the oil better through the engine. Oil. I'm gonna say it like I normally do. So our plan for attack to do this engine is of course hone it, drill that hole, clean the block out. We're gonna go ahead and put some new rings, or not rings, rod bearings in it, just because they're a cheap precaution for them and these do got some pretty good uh, scrapes on them. We can't do nothing with the rings because I don't have any. The rings, I mean, doesn't look horrible. So I'm gonna check, I can check the end gap by pulling the ring off, sliding it down in the head or in the jug and checking how much gap there is. But overall, the piston looks pretty good. He said he put some stainless valves in it. The kit he bought from Amazon was from OMB Warehouse. And he said these are stainless valves. So we probably need to make sure he lapped these valves. Uh, and we're also gonna clean this side cover, put a brand new O-ring and make sure to scrape every bit of the gasket material. Another mistake he made was left all this gasket material. Take your razor blade, take your time, scratch that off, get it clean so this can seal. And then we're gonna also, the last thing we're gonna do is make sure his end play is right on his crank because this is just gonna help the engine last longer. That's what our goal is. And we'll keep in touch with Jose to see how the engine performs when he gets it. He is in Florida, so sea level's different down there. So I'm gonna tune the car best I can for him and then send him a link to buy some jets so he can play around with it. See how good that worked. Look at all that. I'm just going to give him a really good cross hatch on there. Now I'm going to clean this completely out. Look at the rust already. Like how much better that looks. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It knocked almost all of it out. So now we can go back with our finer grit one after I, I clean them 100% in between the hones just to get any kind of grit and stuff. And we always use blaster, brake clean it, cuts through mm -hmm. the grease. And it's just a good way. I use about a can a can a day. Keeps the keeps the engine gremlins away. And this is a brand new ball home, so some of this could be from my ball honer. <clears throat> but it's looking real nice still has a groove that i don't like and it's going to wear his piston for sure okay so after honing it with both the coarse and the fine honer twice i cannot get the lip out you can see the picture that i've taken on screen it's where water has gotten into the cylinder and set and it's damaged more than i would like to see so i could get this board out to like a 72 millimeter uh, i don't have a place local that'll bore stuff uh, in small engines. So what I'm gonna do is I have this 212 block. This is a Hemi block. This was actually the engine we ran on the dyno very first. Like this was our spare bone stock Hemi. The only thing we did was put a jet air filter and exhaust on it on a go-kart later. But uh, it's a bone stock. It only has like one or two hours on it. I'm gonna donate the crankshaft and the block to this guy. 
Uh, basically, if this was my engine, this is the same route I would go. He's got a really expensive Wiseco piston, and I don't want to ruin it if it isn't already taking a decent amount of damage. I'm going to caliper it out. So, unfortunately, we do have to break this up into two videos because there was so much information and breakdown that I feel like if I cut any of it out, we're just skipping the process. But the only reason I broke in, this engine would have started, uh, and I'm, I didn't start it, and I'm kind of glad I didn't. There was so much metal. As soon as I took the valve cover off, I started seeing signs of metal. I don't know where it's coming from. I really do believe it's from where the holes was tapped and stuff, and the block wasn't cleaned out. It's the only thing. The piston's not wore enough to put that much metal in the block. So we're going to do um, a new block, new crank. I'm going to put new rod bearings on it. We're going to go with the same rings he has. He may need to watch out for that. Uh, another thing is he's only running 22 pound springs and he has 1.2 ratio rockers with a 265 lift cam if you do the math it's a little over 300 lift and if you think about it he really should probably be running dual valve springs so i'm going to at least put some 26 pound springs in it because that's what should be in this so on the next video we're going to throw this engine back together probably not going to go too in depth we're just going to re put it all back together and we're going to put it on our dyno and see what it dynos at. It's gonna be probably around 12 to 13 horsepower. The biggest place he could gain is port in the head and stuff. And then we'll go over at the end of the series how he could have spent his money better. And that's what our Road to Horsepower series is about. So what we're about to get into is how to spend your dollar the best possible way for maximum power and what you should avoid buying uh, to save money and things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that. And we're also gonna slap it on the mini bike and take it riding to see what kind of power it puts down so uh thank you jose for reaching out to me it's been fun doing your engine um we're not being hard on jose he did a great job on you know 90 percent of the stuff it's just uh the you know cleanliness is a big thing and then of course that board being rough like that that could have been avoided so uh everybody's learning so it's awesome to do these videos so see us on the next video uh next video you see on the channel will be us putting this back together and dyno it so Thank you so much for supporting us. Uh, make sure to check out the links in the video description. Blaster has been the sponsor for the channel for a long time, and we appreciate them sponsoring today's video. I literally use uh, brake clean in every single engine. We use chain lube on every single chassis. I use our Multimax when I'm uh, drilling or milling stuff over there. I use it as my only lube because it's, for one, affordable, and it works extremely well. We love Blaster. They've been a supporter of the channel for a long time. So thank you, Blaster. Thank you, you guys, for watching the video. We'll see you on the next one. We love you. And God bless.